Want to be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and learn from an inspiring story that just might change your life. What I learned ultimately, my dad was the president of the National Association for Self-Esteem. Most people probably don't even know there is that. <laughs> and he was one of the first authors of Chicken Soup for the Soul. So for anybody that's probably above 35, that they would know that. But the power of positive thinking never resonated with me. And when I was young and I was 18 years old and I drop out of college and I was diagnosed with an initial diagnosis of cancer and it turned out to be shingles and a number of other things, I did start to understand quickly that, well, I don't know if positive thinking works all the time and that the data is anecdotal. I do know that negative thinking does work and it works negatively. And one of the things is I would start at Alabama and I would start with the Jacksonville Jaguars and I would start with the Miami Dolphins. I started to realize, and even looking back to a young age, that nobody wants to be told to be positive. That positive thinking is probably the number one reason this industry has not grown in my 44 years of living. Positive thinking in many cases repulses people. You're telling me to be positive and I'm going through a divorce. You're telling me to be positive and I threw three interceptions. You're telling me to be positive and I got to deal with this president. You're telling me to be positive and I got this current situation. You're telling me to be positive and I got this health situation. So then what's the alternative? Well, the alternative has always been negative. So how's negativity carried? Well, is it your internal thoughts? Well, if you're dealing with trying to change internal thoughts, then you gotta go to affirmations and you gotta go to imagery, you gotta go to visualization, very difficult skills. Well, we started to look at the externalization. Well, if somebody says something out loud, it's 10 times more powerful than if they think it. And then as we started to study the data, particularly data that was just reinforced by Christine Porath from Georgetown and Harvard, that negativity is a multiple of four to seven times more powerful than positivity. So think about that. If I say something out loud, it's 10x. If it's negative, it's four to seven times more powerful. So when I say negative things out loud, it's 40 to 70 times more likely that that will happen or cause a result that won't be good for me than if I just didn't say anything. So as we were going into our second year at Alabama, we were going into our first year at Florida State, and we were ultimately going into our second year at the University of Georgia, we made a bet. What if we could just get our players to not say stupid things out loud? What if we could just do that? Not teach any element of positive thinking, but eliminate conversations about the heat complaining about coaches, complaining about circumstances, complaining about situations, verbalizing negativity. But we weren't gonna lie to them and say, hey, be positive. We just taught them the data. And then what we did was some of the things that you, you noticed in the book, the stories in and around negativity are incredible. Tell us some, um, Bill Buckner was one that took my breath away. So, so Billy Buckner, who just passed away recently, was uh, an incredible, an eight-time gold glove, a great baseball player, for the Boston Red Sox. Well, he made a mistake in sports that would be one of the biggest sport bloopers in history. And in 1986, he let the game-winning run score on a ground ball through his legs that ultimately would give the Mets the World Series. Mm -hmm. Now, I was just watching an ESPN E60 Jeremy Schapp story, and I saw an interview that was done in 1990 that resurfaced in 1995 where Buckner was interviewed 12 days before the World Series. And he said, you know, the dreams are to win, you know, to win the World Series. And the nightmare would be for me to let the game winning run score on a ground ball through my legs. You know, and then ultimately that's exactly what would happen. Now, by saying that out loud, what did he do? He didn't make it happen, but he increased the probability. And this is what I want people to understand. Your internal thoughts are all over the place. I, I wanna push on that. Yeah. Do you think that he makes it more likely because it's going to subtly influence his behavior or because you're talking to some magical deity that then says, well, you said it, and so I'm gonna make it happen? I think that what he did is a subconscious plant. By verbalizing it and knowing that it's 10 times more powerful, he's planting it in his subconscious. He's mm -hmm. not, he doesn't want it to happen but it becomes something that's ultimately on his mind and he gave it more power by verbalizing it. So we both grew up in Tacoma and there used to be a, a thing called Toastmasters. I don't know if you remember Toastmasters, but 
Toastmasters was a local, regional, and a national speaking group for anybody that wanted to get better at speaking. <clears throat> well, my dad had gone to a Toastmasters early on and heard one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. He comes back and tells me, I just had a chance to hear one of the most successful magazine entrepreneurs in the world speak. And he said, when are you taking your SAT? I said, I'm taking it next year. He said, well, this guy was failing out of high school. He was struggling. He was raised by a single mom in the Midwest, but he promised his mother he would take a test called the SAT. So he takes the SAT in May, his junior year, doesn't expect anything, gets his score back in June. Now the SAT, which I don't know how many your population know, but it's, it's a standardized test with a math part and a verbal part. Both are scored out of 800 points. Well, this guy takes it, he's, he's bombing, he's failing out of school, he doesn't expect anything as he's telling the story at Toastmasters. Well, he gets a 1480 out of 1600. So he's stunned, right? That would be for the smart That's people that listen to your podcast. Insane, yeah. Right, cognitive dissonance. Right? I got a like, 900 on my SATs just right. to give people a frame. Right, and I got a, a 10, 990. Excuse and me. I got a 1010. Right, I was just hey, four digits. It was a miracle, right? And and but it's a hard test, and it, you you know it's a variety of different things. So he gets the score, and his mother, doing what any mother would do, knowing her kids, says, "Did you cheat?" Right, she knows her son, and he said, I swear to God, I tried to cheat, but the way the numbers were and the scantrons and the bubbles, you couldn't cheat. So she says, you mean to tell me you really got that score? He said, yeah, I got the score. So he's stunned, Tom. So as my dad's telling me the story, I'm like, okay. So he says, all right, so what he decides is because he realizes he's smart and he's going into his senior year, he says, I'm gonna go to class. Now he starts to go to class, he doesn't hang out with who he did when he didn't go to class, all right? Teachers see him in class and they said, hey, maybe Franklin Pierce, maybe we missed the boat on this kid. So they start to treat him differently. Well, as the guy would tell the story, he graduates, goes to a community college, goes on to Wichita State, goes on to the Ivy League, and becomes this massively successful magazine entrepreneur. So I said, okay, well, the guy was always smart. He just needed a standardized test to unlock it. My dad said, no, that's not the story. And this is what I want you to understand. He said, 12 years after all this guy's success, he gets a letter in the mail from Princeton, New Jersey doesn't think anything about it. The next day, his wife says, you're gonna open it. He opens it. True story, turns out the SAT board will periodically review their test-taking procedures and the policies. The year he took the test, he was one of 13 people sent the wrong SAT score. His actual score was a 740 out of 1600. <laughs> and he said, people think my whole life changed when I got the 1480. But what happened, my whole life changed when I started acting like a 1480. And what does a 1480 do? He goes to class. Well, this is one of the first stories I would share when I had my opportunity at Alabama, or Florida State, or Georgia. So A, your language is powerful, but number two, your behavior is way ahead of your success. And so many people let their feelings dictate what they do as opposed to throw your behavior out there. Russell Wilson's 5'10". He shouldn't be playing pro football, but he behaves like the best quarterback in the country, and he's done that since before he was at that level, and then his feelings and emotions and his skill caught up to that behavior. I think the lesson my dad was trying to teach me um, ultimately was in addition to my language, what I do, not how I feel about my past, is gonna determine who I am in the future. If you wanna see the one-on-one -on -one I did with Trevor that will change your mindset, check out the video right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. But I think the one thing, Evan, that we're always focusing on is performance, not outcomes. What are you doing uh, to help people 